There's been a lot of mysteries in the Five Nights at Freddy's series. I mean, to say a lot would kind of be an understatement. A couple of examples just off the top of my head include who did the bite of 87, what's actually in the FNAF 4 box, what exactly are the shadow animatronics, and maybe to a lesser degree, what exactly is going on with the paper pals. The paper pals are small paper plate decorations that appear in FNAF 2, FNAF 3, FNAF World, Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator, Ultimate Custom Night, FNAF VR, Help Wanted, and surprisingly in Security Breach. While there are a few variations to the Paper Pals designs, the original three in FNAF 2 share fairly similar resemblances to Freddy, Bonnie, and Balloon Boy. It's also important to note that Scott has trademarked these three characters as Paper Freddy, Paper Bonnie and Paper Buddy during FNAF World's initial development. The original Freddy Paper Pal has brown arms and legs, two buttons, and most of the other features associated with Freddy Fazbear. The original Bonnie Paper Pal has dark purple arms and legs, one big button, and two big rabbit ears. However, this Paper Pal's face features tear marks similar to those of the puppet from the same game, and it's missing their right eye. The last Paper Pal kinda resembles the appearance of Balloon Boy, at least from all the characters we'd seen in the series at the time, except he's missing a beller hat and a few items in their hand. Paper Buddy features three red buttons, red arms, blue legs, and a big smile. Yep, this paper pal seems to just be happy to be here. Or here. Wait, did, did he just... Did he just move? As you saw there, it's pretty strange how these little guys work. In Finance of Freddy's 2, Paper Buddy, on rare occasions, can be spotted in the player's office, missing entirely from Party Room 4, or with a few animatronics covering Paper Buddy. Specifically, the animatronics that can enter this room are either Toy Bonnie or Withered Chica. However, there is an unused graphic of Toy Chica actually being seen next to the Paper Buddy in Party Room 4, but this isn't in the actual game. But the real question is, who moved it? Was it one of the animatronics? It'd have to be either Toy Bonnie or Wither Chica then. Is it possessed or potentially haunted? Am I looking too deep into this? Should I be locked up in a psych ward? Don't, don't answer that last one. Since Five Nights at Freddy's 3 features parts from the past locations for the revamped Fazbear's Fright, we can see that at least one of the Paper Pals has made it. Good for them. And it also seems like they brought their buddies with them. Or I'm just going crazy. Seriously though, Finance of Freddy's 3 features the Paper Buddy in the box included with other animatronics from FNAF 2's location. You can also see Paper Buddy in one of the Five Nights at Freddy's 3 teasers on scottgames.com in this same box. While the other two Paper Pals aren't anywhere to be seen in the physical location, sometimes on rare occasions, both the Paper Freddy and Paper Bonnie Paper Pals will potentially show up on either the very left or very right side of your office kind of like how the crumpled Freddy suit does in-game. Now, while in the game, this could be explained by simple hallucinations that the night guard is having due to not keeping the ventilation online, like Phone Dude says on night one. The most important thing you want to watch for is the ventilation. Look, this place will give you the spooks, man. And if you let that ventilation go offline, then you'll start seeing some crazy stuff, man. Keep that air flowing. There's gotta be some significance to why the two paper pals that never moved in FNAF 2 are now suddenly appearing or disappearing at random. FNAF World features all three of the original paper pals in their adventure variants. While they all keep their core appearances for the most part, Paper Bonnie loses their snout, instead replaced with a smile. Represented as a group, the paper pals attacks are Prize Ball 2, Mystery Box 2, and the Mimic Ball ability. The Paper Pals, as a whole, are meant to be support characters. However, they are quickly overshadowed by other characters in the game. The loading screen for this character literally is quoted with, huh? which is probably what every player said when they saw the Paper Pals as a playable character in this game for the first time. They also appear to float, maybe hinting at their supernatural capabilities. See, I'm not crazy, you're crazy. 
Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator features a brand new set of purchasable paper pals. Specifically on Dumpster Diver Weekly's catalog, the last page includes these new paper pals that can be purchased for a measly $5. Personally, I, I couldn't think of a better way to spend those $5. The three paper pals differ from their initial designs in FNAF 2. Two of the new paper pals are visually distinct from the ones we've known in the series, with different colored arms and legs and brand new faces to match. However, one of the paper pals shares a strong resemblance to Paper Buddy from FNAF 2. I wonder if they're related. Unfortunately, I don't think these dudes have names. So I'm gonna name them the uh, Silly Squad. After purchasing the Silly Squad, your new pizzeria will include them on the walls, giving you a whopping single extra point in atmosphere. Just what I needed. In Ultimate Custom Night, Paper Buddy can be seen in the default office option in game, resting in the same box from FNAF 3. Unfortunately, Paper Buddy's buddies are nowhere to be seen in the contents of Ultimate Custom Night. Even the new Paper Pals from Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator, you know, the silly squad, show up in the right hall camera. I guess it's good that no one's moving though. Included in FNAF VR Help Wanted is a virtual recreation of FNAF 2. With this virtual recreation comes the original Paper Pals. Wait, these look a little different. If you haven't noticed, the Freddy Paper Pal is a darker brown, almost black, and lost his top hat. The Bonnie Paper Pal's colors switched to black entirely, and Paper Buddy? Well, he looks pretty much the same. These Paper Pals are also present in the fourth party room, and to my knowledge, don't move in game. In Security Breach, Two of the three Paper Pals can be found in the Bonnie Bowl area of the game. Paper Freddy can be found in the restaurant section of Bonnie Bowl near the menu options and Paper Bonnie is located inside of this area on a cork bulletin board. Interestingly enough, both Paper Freddy and Bonnie also appear in Ruin in Chapter 7 with no sign of Paper Buddy. So what's going on with these guys? Why did they get replaced in FNAF 6? Why are the original Paper Pals back in Security Breach? Am I looking way too deep into these simple children's decorations? Well, I have a few theories that may answer some of these questions. Personally, I had always thought, and I believe others may share this sentiment, that the Paper Pals were just supposed to represent three of the Easter eggs present in FNAF 2. That being JJ, Shadow Freddy, and RWQ as there is a Paper Pal selected for a Balloon Boy, Freddy, and Bonnie lookalike. Maybe Shadow Freddy and RWQ's Paper Pals don't actually move due to their shared similarities. However, what about Endo 2? That's an easter egg in FNAF 2 that isn't represented in a Paper Pal form. Well, if we think about it, Endo 2 is a moving animatronic easter egg with two different instances in FNAF 2. While all three of the other characters are simple, one instance, kind of blink and you miss it, easter eggs. Maybe the paper pals represent easter eggs that are significantly harder to find, and are placed here as a hint towards players. Or maybe they really are just kids decorations. Decorations that Wither Chica, in particular, isn't a very big fan of. Another thing to note is this Secret Spring Bonnie poster found on Cam 2 in Five Nights at Freddy's 3 replacing the regular Freddy poster in this same position. If you look carefully, you'll notice the resemblance to Paper Bonnie. Spring Bonnie is missing its right eye, just like the Paper Pals. This could potentially present the Paper Pals as kids' recreations of Spring Bonnie, Fredbear, and perhaps the Puppet, as Paper Buddy also has a strong resemblance to the Puppet. In particular, the three buttons, stringy arms and legs, and big grin. But now, why did they get replaced by imposters in FNAF 6? And why are the original Paper Pals back in Security Breach? Well, if you remember back to FNAF 3, we know that Fazbear Frights had fully burnt down at the end of the game. I'd assume that with this, the Paper Buddy Paper Pal burnt in the process, because he's literally made of paper. Since there's no sign of any physical remnants of Paper Freddy or Paper Bonnie, aside from the Easter eggs, they probably weren't in the actual building. This is why they're seen in Security Breach, alongside other memorabilia from past locations. While they may have been redesigned to more closely look like their Help Wanted designs, both of these Paper Pals are still intact. The reason they don't appear in Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator is because none of the other remnants of past locations are used for decorations in that game, with all new animatronics and games to play. 
and you know, at least Paper Buddy would have been turned to ash. One thing I find very compelling is the proximity and redesigns of the two Paper Pals in Security Breach, as both Paper Freddy and Paper Bonnie share a darker redesign and are placed very close to each other in Bonnie Bowl, their resemblances to both of the shadow animatronics become stronger. Maybe they were placed here to watch over the new location, kinda like the mini Nightmare Eon plushies we see throughout both Security Breach's main campaign and its DLC, Ruin. These entities are slowly watching watching over the location built over the FNAF 6 pizzeria. But you don't need to hear it from me. I mean, just listen to Daco himself. Oh, hello, Shadow Bonnie. So what really are the Paper Pals? Are they just children's decorations made to distinct one of the many party rooms in FNAF 2? Probably, honestly. But their inclusion in the majority of the games in the series makes me believe that Scott particularly favored these characters if you can even call them that. At least, I find it very interesting that they got their own spot on the roster in FNAF World, making them fairly relevant to the series, especially with their appearances in games like Security Breach and its DLC, Ruin, leaving us speculating where we might see them next, if we'll even see them at all. I mean, as long as they're as far away from me as possible. Uh, hello? Did somebody just move? <laughs> Uh, how did these get here? Isn't there supposed to be one more? Did it? <laughs> ah, there you are. Wait, how did you move? How did... 